How y'all doing today? Welcome back. I'm Kevin, and I've had a lot of people request that we do a toolbox tour. Uh, the shop tour was very popular, and slowly we're going to do some videos in more detail on different things around the shop. This is my Snap-on toolbox. I got this back in the late 1990s. Uh, I believe it's a KRA 1000. At the time, this was one of the biggest boxes Snap-on made. My wife found this used in a newspaper, and we paid about a fifth of what it would cost to have bought it new. I don't think I ever would buy what some of these guys are paying for toolboxes now for what we do. Uh, I'll start at the bottom because everybody else seems to start at the top. We start, this is my air tool drawer. Uh, I still use a lot of air tools. I know a lot of guys have gone to the battery. I have the cordless stuff too, but I still like the air tools for certain things. I've got ratchets, impact wrench, uh, needle scale or grinder, wire brush, a right angle cutoff tool. This adjusts the different angles. Uh, die grinder actually uses this quite a bit with the Scotch Bright wheels, kind of a cool tool for cleanup. And this is something I bought used out of the paper, also, really cheap, was a air chisel that when I got it, I don't think it had ever been used. In this drawer, I have all my pullers, bearing tools. These are some snap-on tools for pulling pulleys off of alternators and um, water pumps and such. Various pullers. This is a, a puller I actually made for something we pulled off of an old tractor. I just kept it because I might use it for something someday. A snap-on bar puller bearing puller and these are my racing steel drivers and I've actually got a few things that I've made that we use to go along with that uh, a couple different size slide hammer pullers steering wheel puller harmonic balance puller a pitman arm puller um, these are things I don't use that often but when you do use it it's worth its weight in gold This is my hammer drawer. Seems like you never have enough hammers. Uh, Murphy's Law tools of everything in this box becomes a hammer at some point. I've got just some oddball hammers I've picked up over the years and put handles in and all just because they're kind of unique. Some bodywork hammers that I've collected over the years. Nice C swing dead blow I actually found laying in the middle of the highway. Rubber mallets old shingle hatchet that I use more for splitting kindling wood for the wood stove than anything. Various other different types of hammers. Like I said, I've got some oddball stuff that I've found. It just has a unique uses to it. Uh, in this drawer, i got a tap and die set, some different specialty tools, a rivet set, some broken bolt extractors, Try not to use this one too much. We try not to break too much off. Uh, I just got these today, as a matter of fact. These are some plastic scrapers for taking decals and off without damaging the paint. I got these from Eastwood. Uh, there's an Eastwood store in our area that a lot of people don't even know is there. It's a really cool store, and the guys that work in there are fantastic. Uh, I've got some fuel line disconnect tools. Uh, these were something I bought offline years ago. They're for protecting metric and standard chrome nuts, chrome bolts, so that the wrench doesn't scratch them. I don't think I've hardly ever used them. A tool for installing, removing and installing the uh, main seal bearings around the crankshaft in a, in a motor without taking it completely out. Some air conditioning tools, just basic stuff. You know, just a normal rivet gun. I use that a lot. And a ratcheting screwdriver, which cordless drills have pretty much replaced this even coming out of the box. This box here is just empty. And this is a Mac top tap and die set. 
uh, just so I had standard end metric. Clean up some thread holes. This door, I've got a lot of testing tools. Uh, old timing light and attack dwell meter, which I haven't used in 30 years. Uh, diesel compression tester. Most of what we have is, is diesel. Vacuum gauge. Snap on. This is something I also bought at a yard sale and got really cheap. A gasoline normal compression tester. I use this one more than anything if you're testing like a little Briggs and Stratton measure or something to see if you've got compression. An O-ring measuring tool. Different electrical testers, connections, uh, digital multimeter leads, an old soldering gun, four test lights. And these are something you don't see too much if you take, if you take something apart you put the two corresponding stickers or little tapes that come out of here and you can label wires with numbers so you know how they go back together you don't see that too much and I've got some clips too you put the corresponding color clips on hoses or vacuum lines so that you know how they go back together when you go to reassemble in here we have a few specialty tools I got some larger taps and dies, uh, some tap sockets, oddball sizes that I use, uh, some radiator hose pinch off removal tools, all kinds of files, chainsaw files, flat files, round files, uh, flywheel turner, piston groove cleaner, seal puller, piston ring compressor, a stud remover installer, a seal puller, some of the oddball stuff that you don't use that often. This is for pulling flywheels off of like a Briggs and Stratton engine. You put it on the crankshaft and smack it with a hammer. A uh, tool that I made to take the bungs out of a plastic oil drum. This door here have a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Hooks and picks and scratch alls, some trim removal tools that, that double as pry bars. Uh, some different knives, some reamers, some grease fitting tools. This is a socket and a tool that I made for installing grease fittings. Tweezers, uh, some carving tools, stapler, different X-Acto knives, some smaller picks and dental picks, uh, different inspection mirrors, scrapers, putty knives, a couple levels, uh, some toothpicks, some chalk, different things, some Allen keys. And of course, my trusty plumb bob. In this drawer, I have a lot of my pliers, uh, vice grips, vice grips that are for taking off rounded nuts, uh, channel locks, cutters, different kinds of pliers, different oddball needle nose I've found at yard sales and sales and just kind of come in handy for stuff on 90 degree pliers. This is a neat pair if you're trying to reach a nut or a bolt up into a tight area. Uh, wire cutters, some old tile nippers that I'll use for pulling like a nail out of something. This is like a pair of blacksmith's pliers, more of a pair of tongs, but they just, something neat and I collect a lot of tools. So I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of my tools are very clean. I don't put anything back in my toolbox without wiping it off. I just can't stand picking something up and you get greasy. And the trick that I learned when I was bachelor, when I used to clean my house, I put a sock on each hand. And we go through and just dust everything. So a lot of times I'll just have a pair of white gloves and when I go to put all my tools away at the end of the thing, day that they're on the bench, I can just kind of wipe them off just using a pair of cheap cotton gloves. down the bottom on the left side uh, these are my angle grinders I've got a big one and a lot of different attachments and then I try to keep two or three around I've got one with a flap wheel one with a zip wheel one with a wire wheel 
Uh, that's an old Makita. I've probably had that for 35 years. Been a very good tool. I know if I bought a new Makita, it probably wouldn't last 35 weeks. And I'm thinking about, I'd like to get a fourth grinder so I have one with a regular grinder this morning so you're not constantly changing wheels when you're doing something. In this drawer, I have some safety equipment, some goggles and glasses. Uh, this is an ignition box. Keep small tools in it for working on anything ignition related, electrical. And this is an electrical box I usually grab when I go to work on something if I'm running any wire connections or anything. I got the stripper and the crimper and, and anything I would need to wire switch up or something. Uh, some stamps for putting names and initials on tools and things. In this drawer I have some battery tools, some oil filter wrenches. I also keep some of my bigger oil filter wrenches on the wall just because they take up so much drawer, drawer space. And you'd be surprised how many different size filters on equipment require so many different size wrenches. Um, this here is what I call my sacrificial tools. If I need to make a tool to fit into an area, cut something, weld something together, grind it just to get something done, I'm not doing it to a good tool. Um, you see, I cut that off for something we did on with that, what was left of that wrench. These are nice to keep around so you don't butcher up your good tools. Pipe wrenches, pipe cutter, tubing cutters. Different punches and chisels, uh, some valve tools. A lot of chisels I've collected over the years, you get some oddball chisels, and I'll grab them if I see them somewhere. I just come again with some brass tools, brass chisels. These were four diesel tools to take the fan clutch off of the uh, radiator fan, some diesel injection tools, a fuel pump, part of the old 6.9 uh, diesels to set the time, and you actually rotated the pump couple wrenches in there that were specifically for that. Brake tools, brake spring pliers, uh, brake spring installer, brake spring installer, the gauge. Tire gauges, I've got a low pressure gauge in here that only goes up to like 10 pounds for like lawnmower tires and stuff and different uh, blow guns. This is something I made to winterize uh, garden hoses and stuff. I can flip this on my garden hose and blow air through it in the winter time and winterize it out. Oh, well, this drawer just kind of an oddball drawer, pens and markers. Uh, I used to have a hydro seeder. There were specific tools for rebuilding the pump on a hydro seeder. I just hung on to these. The different screw extractors. I use these a lot for pulling the brass uh, fittings out of hydro off lines and stuff that they get snapped off. A carbide burr set or partial carbide burr set. A clutch alignment tool, it's been a long time since I've done a clutch in anything, even my big Peter build has an automatic now. A steering wheel puller. An old hand impact driver you hit with a hammer, which is something that probably hadn't been used in. I think my father had this, I don't think I've ever used it. And an assortment of loose uh, hex and torx keys. And this is just the exacto set that somebody gave me for my birthday or Christmas or something one year. I don't think I've already ever used it. This door here, I have a lot of my blow molded case stuff. Uh, I've got a airlift antifreeze injector, a vacuum pump, a leak detector, radiator leak down detector, inspection camera, hole saws. Uh, this was for taking cat fluid samples to send into the lab when equipment's uh, still under warranty. Uh, hole punch kit, large three quarter inch torque wrench, various scanner tools, 
this has come in pretty handy over the years. It's not a tap and die set, but it's a thread chaser just to clean out threads and, and whole threads without using a tap and die. Uh, fluke meter, fuel pressure test kit, and a master lock pick kit. We used to use if you lost the keys to a truck or something. I don't think this will fit any of the newer vehicles. In this drawer, I have all my standard wrenches, flare nut wrenches, um, valve wrenches, and thin wrenches, ratcheting wrenches, ignition wrenches, half moon wrenches, open end, combination, uh, stubbies. Again, three of the three of the best wrenches I have a Mac, a snap on, and a blue point that I found laying in the middle of the highway. I think a lot of mechanics leave tools laying up inside of stuff when they're working on it. This is my metric wrenches, stubbies, um, combination, open end, all different size adjustable wrenches all the way up to a 24 inch wrench for working on the uh, larger equipment. This drawer, some odds and ends, a lot of magnetic pickup, tool, magnetic pickup tools and grabbers. Uh, one in here is actually an electromagnet, you put batteries in and it'll only energize when you push the button. Mods and a serpentine belt tool, hacksaw, a metric and a standard hex key set. It's just some oddball stuff that won't fit in other drawers. Blow gun that I made for cleaning out air filters on equipment. You can really reach up inside. And in this drawer I got bolt cutters, snips, cutters, oil filter pliers, um, mostly cutting type stuff. Over here is all torque wrenches and measuring tools, some different calipers, a couple squares. All my screwdrivers, Torx drivers, um, small micro drivers. Like I say, this kind of stuff with the comeuppance of the cordless drills, you really don't use screwdrivers that much anymore, it seems like. Different assortment of pry bars, fitment arm pullers, um, different, different wedges, large screwdriver that I use as a pry bar. Different snap ring pliers and tools for working on hydraulic cylinders. Uh, some knife sharpening stuff. I have duplicates of each of these so that I have an inside set and an outside set so I don't have to switch them back and forth if I'm rebuilding the hydraulic cylinder or something. I'm six foot tall and it's almost impossible for me to see into the top of this toolbox. So I bought this bench and cut the legs down to make it as high as I could get without it obstructing any of the drawers to get into the top. All right, in the top I keep all my sockets. Now I had to make up a little bar to hold the lid up. These gas cylinders, I know you have them on SUV trunks and hoods and they never seem to last. I, I got tired of replacing them, so when I open this now I just prop it up and I don't have to worry about it. These are all my various sockets. I've got from three quarter inch, two and a quarter all the way down to 3 sixteenths quarter drive. Different adapters, extensions, some uh, lug nut torque sockets, all kinds of different drivers. I know you don't see too many of these anymore, but the old speed wrenches, I've got them in all three drive sizes, three quarter inch, some half inch drive in a three eighths frame, a lot of snap on stuff. Some craftsman stuff, some older craftsman stuff that's that's hard to find. Uh, it's not the same as the newer craftsman stuff. Different extensions. The palm ratchet, you can put a socket in to really get in a tight area. Breaker bars. Swivel adapters. A lot of quarter inch sockets. 
crowfoot wrenches, a lot full assortment metric and standard in here. Uh, the person that owned this toolbox before me had the mirror in there. I guess the thought was you could stand on the ground and see what was in there, but you still need to stand up on something. This drawer, we got a pipe threader, ball joint press, and some um, plug nut sockets. This is a ball joint service kit for ball joints and U joints. And this is just a spare tire plug kit I keep around in case I need to take one on the road with me. miscellaneous welding supplies, a uh, vacuum leak down gauge for testing engine valves to see if they're getting bypassed. I actually made this from something I saw on an old show called Shade Tree Mechanic. Uh, water pressure gauge, air pressure gauge, and this is so I can put air to my trailer brakes without and hook it to an air compressor without having to have it hooked to the truck if I want to make the brakes work. It's just a miscellaneous drawer. I got a couple cleaning brushes, some auto body dollies, tailpipe expanders, a tailpipe shaper, and a couple adapters to hook different things to my generator. A uh, battery miner and just a, a mirror I keep around if I gotta try to see up inside an engine compartment. These are my big wrenches. Uh, we work on a lot of big equipment, so we need some pretty good size wrenches sometimes. Uh, bigger rivet gun, some specialty tools for the plastic lug nuts on the Peterbilt. This tool here is for taking the pins out of the teeth on the escalator in the back. Oh, you probably saw this in a, in a previous video. And a Ford fan clutch wrench for taking the fan off of the fan clutch. And I got the big wrenches in metric and standard. This drawer here, I just got some odds and ends, a little catch-all drawer. These are all plugs that come on hydraulic hoses or some I save them so when I'm working on something, if I need to plug a hole or cap a line, cap a hydraulic line or something to keep from making a mess on the floor from dirt getting down in it. So I always hang on to all these. This is just some oddballs, a full can spoon in case I'm eating. Standard metric nut drivers and all wire brushes and bottle brushes for cleaning out fittings and tubes. Hydraulic connections and such. This drawer here is all my sealants. Uh, Teflon tape for plumbing and hydraulic connections. High temp RV, gray RV, water pumped RV, blue, dielectric grease, gasket maker, Teflon, thread lock, thread seal, different things I got. Most of these are full and all the empty ones as I'm using them, I use them here. These are my spare ones. All my various cordless grills. I need to make some kind of a rack here, get a cabinet or something. I like to do something a little different with this spot. And then this whole box here is just a catch all for basically junk nuts and bolts and stuff like that. And there you have it. There's a big part of my tool collection, and I, I do call it a collection because I've been collecting some of these. There's tools in here that I got when I was 16 years old, and it's an ongoing thing. It takes a long time to build a set of tools like this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Please subscribe. Um, we're working hard to get down a thousand subscribers, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.